so much fucked up shit to get into. So back up. You, what was your bad experience with guitar? All right. So in like 1999, whenever Corn put the issues album out, mm-hmm. I was like, all right, I want to do that. Mm-hmm. And uh, I went to a guitar shop and uh, <laughs> the ma- it was a father and son, Ferrari Music, I think it was called. And uh, the man was so cool. The younger son. Okay. The old man was the old man, but the younger son, was, I was just enamored with him. He was like everything that I thought was cool about guitar stuff. And uh, I just wanted to please this man so bad that I started taking <laughs> guitar lessons. Pause. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> and the only thing that I remember how to play on guitar is the opening riff to Blind, which is like the most simplistic thing that you could possibly learn on an instrument. Mm-hmm. How much did you pay him for that? I think it was like, it wasn't even a lot. It was maybe like 18 bucks an hour. That doesn't seem bad at all. Four, 400 hours. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but how many d- times did you go? I went every Saturday for, how for an hour. How many Saturdays in a row? Maybe <laughs> uh, maybe like three months. All right. And that's all you left? That's Guitar is fucking hard. Yeah. It is. It took me but 15 would, years to be able to play a whole song and sing it. I would never practice. Like I, I bought the guitar just because I like this guy. I bought an amp just because oh, I like this like. guy. <laughs> I, I, I needed a father figure so bad, dude. You have no idea. <laughs> And I went, I think I went for like three months and then, uh, yeah, it's all making sense now. Like I think I was, I was on the verge of a mental breakdown and that's when I went to uh, check myself into uh, an inpatient facility. This is when you talk to the black lady. Yeah. Oh dude. And, um, one night, uh, after I got out, I wrote him a letter saying like, Hey, like, uh, please don't think I'm rude. I didn't bail because I just felt like bailing. Like I, I was in the nut house <laughs> and I dropped it in their mailbox and never talked to him again. <laughs> You wrote him a letter? <laughs> you wrote him a Dear John letter? I feel apologize. bad about disappointing people. Oh, man. But uh, welcome to Little Stinkers, baby. <laughs> I'm Mike Rainey, Michael fucking Rainey, John Del Calo, Hello, Jacob Fermatera, Jeff Simmons. Hey, hey. Yeah, so. You got to practice your chords at home. I do. Yeah. And that's why I want to have another shot at guitar, because I don't want that experience with guitar to define me. Well, you're in luck. John Mayer just put out a $20,000 guitar. <laughs> it's not even electric. Oh, man. I'm waiting for my finances to change. Um, That's a John Mayer joke. Waiting on the world to yeah, change. Yeah, yeah, no, I got it. Keep on waiting, waiting, waiting for my finances to change. <laughs> <laughs> now I understand yeah. it. <laughs> How are you guys? I'm good. good. Better now. That's great. <laughs> yeah. I was good, now I'm better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I can't wait to find out if we're doing tonight's stinker or not. I really hope we are, because I got a lot of fun stuff to tell you about him and about uh, some experiences that I, that I had while researching him. Should okay. we just get right to it, then? Let's do it, buddy. Let's figure right. it out. Keep going. I don't think I had a chance to see any uh, new episodes this week to me, so... So we good? Wow. All right. Win it this time. All right. Well, Someday. One of these days. And listen, I, I know you're a man of honor and you're waiting for that coin to fall your way. But if there's ever a time where you just flat out want to do in a Practical Jokers episode, we could do one. Thank you. You're welcome. You're so kind. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I just keep on waiting, waiting, waiting for the coin to change. Coin? Yeah. That's perfect. Thank you. Yeah. This is one, one syllable. syllable. Yeah. And coin change. Yeah. It's the same thing. Uh, yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. Hold I on. wish I had. <laughs> <laughs> on a nubble level. I wish I had more coins. <laughs> All, right. All right. I guess we're doing it. All right. I'll tell you who we're doing, then I'll, then I'll give you uh, a little background <laughs> to uh, what was going on. All right. So tonight's stinker is a gentleman you're probably familiar with to some degree, uh, a man who killed his entire family, Chris Watts. The Family Annihilator. Oh, my God. Is that really his nickname? It's not his nickname, but it is a term used to describe that kind of man. I hadn't heard that until I started researching him. It does sound like a monster truck. I just, wow. The pride of Denver, right? <laughs> it also sounds like uh, something you could order, like a food challenge at a restaurant. <laughs> yeah, let's get the uh, Family Annihilator. Yeah. Uh, it's like a, a guy that like kneels down to your table. is like, all right, before I bring the check, can I get anybody dessert? And it's like, what do you say, kids? Family Annihilator? <laughs> yeah! 
<laughs> We're going to try the family annihilator. <laughs> I don't, I don't know this fellow. You really know who this is? Yeah, he's the guy who he murdered his wife and, and his kids. Yeah, two kids. Uh, awful. Because uh, I, I think I saw this documentary they had on Netflix. Mm-hmm. And uh, the wife was like a Facebook kind of influencer, sort of. Like a, like a multi-level marketing, all her her network. Mm-hmm. So unbearable woman. Yes. Like we, uh, I don't like the victim blame, but we are going to do it this episode. No, we're not victim <laughs> she blaming. Is truly. She's in a sweet woman. I wasn't going to go that far, but she was trying to bring in extra income for the family so that the girls could At play what sports. What cost though? Bothering every single <laughs> yes, dude. person, anyone you know has ever met on the internet. We're just waiting for a few more people to join. <laughs> Dude, that was great, dude. Thank you. You should be a, a multi-level marketing influencer. <laughs> a fella came into my Facebook world 10 years ago. Oh, no. So in shape. Selling something. Herbalife of yeah. some kind. Mm-hmm. And uh, he just was dating someone that I had gone to high school with that I didn't really even know. And he just like looked you up through her friends? Yes. Oh, my God. So he would God. go through. I can't imagine how extensive this mm. This Casanova. (laughs) This net he was casting. (laughs) And he truly was an in-shape fella. But that was my first experience with this uh, MLM. Consistency breeds results. (laughs) To those those kind of people, both that guy and Chris Watts' wife, Shanann. um, You heard me. Is that how you say it? it? That's how she says it. Now, I've heard interviews where her own mother refers to her as Shannon. Okay. So she took it upon herself. To this may be like a, little a, a multi-level marketing flair oh, okay. to it. Yeah. Like I'm a unique lady. Yeah, talking point. Yeah. Icebreaker. But, dude, there is, um, once, you, once you fully commit to being that kind of person, it's like, yeah, you will, everybody in your life will probably end up hating you, but there's some people that really make a decent living out of this. And she was doing pretty well. Um. I couldn't imagine many people wanted to be around her because you were always being sold on something. Yeah. And it's like, everybody's gotten pitched by something. Like, have you had people close to you pitch you on this kind of shit? (laughs) No, I remember Avon being a thing in the 90s. Yeah. My mom never sold it. Somebody came over at some point. Was Tupperware a thing? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Tupperware parties. It was, I think, uh, women in the 80s and 90s, the bigger things were Avon, Tupperware, and dildos. I'm being for real. Yeah. Dildo parties are a thing. And I think that's that my know. my theme is a birthday party as a child. <laughs> <laughs> that's why the Tupperware guy was yeah. there. <laughs> There's some that are also hey, dinosaurs. Wait, so are the two those can... also candles? <laughs> <laughs> Yank me candle. You're gonna want to blow that out. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, when you get roped in by one of these fuckers, man, yeah. you hate them forever. Yeah. By the way, I want to say uh, now, if if you haven't already, please join the Patreon. Four dollars a month, or forty dollars for the year. Tell a friend. Right. Yeah, <laughs> go on. All right. So Chris Watts <laughs> was born in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Just sign a couple of friends up. Actually, <laughs> like if you get ten friends, I mean, if you just get ten of your <laughs> loose relatives' information, their credit card, or their credit card for the weekend, mm. great Christmas gift. Yeah, we'll give you we'll give you a hundred stinker bucks if you can steal one of your friend's <laughs> credit cards. <laughs> if you can steal one of your friend's credit card and sign twenty five people up using their name under their credit card, we'll give you we'll mail you a hundred stinker bucks. Yeah, and, and a stinker buck. If you're wondering, it's just a, a sharpie that's been shoved deep into my belly button, <laughs> and I'll we'll send it to you. Oh, Jake, I finally threw that thing out. <laughs> Oh, no. no, the guy's going to be crushed. Yeah, you Jesus. can do another one for me, uh, but uh, yeah. No, I'm not going to You know what I did one. with it? And then like two months ago, Jake shoved the Sharpie into his belly button because some pervert asked him to <laughs> during a during a live stream. And we put it in like a fucking evidence bag. <laughs> and it ended up behind my TV over there. <laughs> and I was uh, cleaning up some shit in this room. And I was like, oh my God, it's here. And like there was like moisture built up inside the Ziploc <laughs> oh bag. Oh my God, there so was like <laughs> specimens growing. Yeah, are those spuds? Dude, I, I had to throw this thing out like it was a fucking antique doll that had eyes that followed me around the house. It started sprouting chia pet hair. Yeah. So, sorry, dude. Uh, you have to contact, contact Jake Don't privately contact for that. Me. I'm not yeah. doing it again. Come to our show in Cleveland. Yes. Yeah. September 8th. And we'll and give you a thousand stinker yeah, bucks. Yeah, bring a Costco pack of uh, markers. We'll do whatever you fucking want us to do with them. <laughs> So, Chris Watts was born in uh, Fayetteville, North Carolina, May 16th, 1985. 
Younger fellow. Oh, shit. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, good looking guy too, man. It really had a lot of good things going for him. And uh, yeah, it took a little bit too far. And before I go any deeper to this, I will say that like I've been consuming Chris Watts content since we finished recording the last episode, which was what, last Wednesday? Yeah. So from Wednesday till today, I've just been reading everything I could possibly read and watch about Chris Watts. So like I have like Chris Watts is like in my dreams. And uh, <laughs> like I argued with my wife two nights ago. And uh, it was just like, it wasn't something I expected. And I, I didn't say it, but I was just thinking like, I would love to have not have been in the midst of a Chris Watts information binge before you started this argument with me. Oh my God. But we're on good terms. Thank God. But man, you really, thank there are God. times where like all this information just really just, you feel the gravity of it. And that was one of those moments. Normally it's just like. I have fun, and then yeah, it's gone. But weird. like that was one of those moments where I was like, "Man, this is not the guy to be covering while we're arguing." Yeah, now that you said, I, I don't think I've seen her today. Actually, that's kind of weird. <laughs> She's fine. <laughs> She's upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> don't bother her. <laughs> or I'm not bothering anyone. <laughs> but yeah, he's from Fayetteville, North Carolina. Jake. Okay. A southern fella. I know how you like your southern fellas. Okay, all right. Deep, deep fried. Deep fried. <laughs> yes. Deep fried and... Covered in oil. Covered in grits or... Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Chunked, chunked and covered. <laughs> Gross. Smothered, covered, and chunked is how he likes them. You should start a an OnlyFans with those as the adjectives you oh should describe. Oh, my God. You. Those are my keywords. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Loving parents, uh, Ronnie and Cindy, uh, older sister named Jamie. So came from a decent family. There's not a lot of information about him as a child. By all accounts, he was a very quiet kid. Uh, he was an okay student. He had one teacher that, that really enjoyed having him as a student. Um, he was uh, an automotive teacher at his high school. And he, he, he felt like he was a really good student and a really nice kid to, to, to teach. Never any issues. And um, when he was younger, he dreamed of becoming a part of a NASCAR pit crew. You ever dream of something like that? Reasonable dream. Yeah, I think so, especially yeah. for a kid down there. Because there is like a uh, a NASCAR technical institute. He ends up going there and graduating from oh, there. Shit. Oh, cool. And yeah, not far from him. It's, um, I think it's like a hundred, like a hundred, a little over a hundred miles like west of where he lived is where this NASCAR technical institute is. Okay. So it's like. Commuted every day in a race car. <laughs> <laughs> took him 15 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> uh, but in 2003, he won a partial scholarship to the school. Nice. So yeah, it's it's more than I ever got. That's pretty cool. I didn't know anything about that. Yeah, I, I just, mean, I had no idea how you got into. I just thought you drove fast, and yeah. then if you drove fast enough, somebody f saw you on the highway. <laughs> like, hey, turn two was pretty good there, pal. <laughs> yeah, it's like you could. I mean, there, there's. I don't know if they're selecting them specifically from this school, or if yeah. this is just kind of a thing where NASCAR pays the name the school, <laughs> yeah. with increasing enrollment. Of course, yeah, that's a. A money grab for sure, because I, I bet you you don't have to do any of that stuff. Right, yeah. And, like, how do you do advertising? Do you like to watch men drive? Uh-huh. <laughs> Come on down to the NASCAR Technical Institute, <laughs> where you can change anything but uh, the sad loneliness inside of you. <laughs> Jake, you're a great pitch man. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but, yeah, the NASCAR Institute is in Mooresville, North Carolina, and that's okay. where he ends up going. He graduates from there. And after he graduates, the NASCAR dreams are finished. He's just like, fuck it. I'm just going to get a job working on cars. So he starts working for a Ford dealership. And at this time, he's got a very close relationship with his dad. I do not have one of those. And... <laughs> <laughs> said the inside part out loud again. Yeah. <laughs> I always forget about that. So he's now away from his father. Even though it's not too, too far, like he is... You could tell, like, he and his father ha had a very strong bond and... You know, fortunately, I haven't had to experience that yet with one of the kids leaving the nest. So I can't imagine how that feels. Um, but his dad really took him leaving home very hard. What do you think his dad got into when Chris Watts left home and broke his heart? You know, model trains. Prostitutes. Cocaine. Mm. Okay. Damn. The in-between. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like being in the middle. <laughs> so he was uh, tooting a little bit. Toot, dude, dude. That's... <laughs> Is there, did he do it before? No, like no, no evidence of just dad as being in the drugs. Got into, wow. And the only explanation is that he was heartbroken over not being able to see his son every day. Yeah. I think it could have just I been like, fuck that. it. Like I, I don't have these responsibilities anymore and I can just do what I want. 
which is something I plan on doing sometime in the near future. <laughs> so, yeah, I can identify with that shit. Damn. But they have an intervention for him, and then the dad cleaned up his act after that, and as far as we know, cocaine was never an issue again hmm. for the man. God, I'd love for it to be an issue for me again. <laughs> I miss it so much, man. <laughs> oh, my God. But in 2006, he graduates from the NASCAR Technical Institute with honors. <laughs> Magna Vroom Laude. <laughs> Jake. <laughs> yes. Dude. That's what I was. I was searching for those words. There's a, uh, what's the 5.0 car? A Mustang? Mustang. <laughs> okay. Mine was going to be Mustang. Oh, okay. Vroom Laude. Yeah. But all right. You, I'm sorry. You nailed it, brother. I'm no, sorry. don't apologize yeah. to me. You nailed it. I'm, I'm the one who can't think of things and doesn't have a good relationship with his father. <laughs> Yes, it's only because your dad is in your life that you were able to say this word so quickly. (laughs) I think you're working yourself into a scholarship at the NASCAR Institute right now. Thank you, Jake. Thank you. But yeah, he uh, graduates with honors. Uh, He's working full-time at the Ford dealership. And he, uh, at this time, he gets into his first loving relationship with a lady, a divorcee who's on the rebound, who's just looking to pork. And unfortunately, she leaves him high and dry with no notice whatsoever. You ever have a lady do that to you? Um, I don't know. Wish maybe. I can say I have, Mike. No, oh. maybe we just didn't exchange numbers. <laughs> <laughs> There's been a couple of those. Yeah, it happens. I don't want you to ever worry about that, though. <laughs> I'll always You're have gonna to be all right, so man. So painful. What the fuck? <laughs> Why did he do that? For I us? thought your hand was gonna go down, and I was gonna put mine on top of yours, but. Turns out you were just wiggling your arms like a... <laughs> we need a slow motion replay. Of like whatever a swimmer the f- looking for help. Um, Thanks for saving me. You're welcome. Anytime. <laughs> <laughs> Things don't work out that well with his first girlfriend, Jake. Okay. So his cousin hooks him up with another lady. Uh, a friend of hers, a lady by the name of Shanann Rusick. Oh, no. Later becomes Shanann Watts. They fall in love. Uh, one of their first dates, where do you think he takes her? NASCAR. Yeah. Uh, adjacent. Uh, Indy car. Ooh. Go-karts. Dover. Kid Rock concert. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Next door to the race car track. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he takes you to Kid Rock, and uh, they grow on one another, and he, he has a very um, introverted personality, and she's very extroverted. Um. They don't pair well, but you could see how they could both feel as though they serve one another's dynamic. They completely, yes. yeah. Yeah, not in a very good way either, though. Now, prior to meeting up with Chris Watts, she has a very um, very murky history. Aside from the divorce, she worked at something called, like, Dirty South Automotive. She was also a divorcee. Yes. Second Whoa. divorcee yeah. in a row. Wow. Yeah. Likes broken has, ladies. Has a type. Yeah. I like a broken lady myself. Kind of lady that looks like she's been hit by a truck and should not have survived. <laughs> she does, man. I like a strong, broken lady. Oh, my God. The kind you just put her, take her to the collision guy. He bangs her out a little bit. The kind of bitch that'll total a Prius. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, she's got like a, she has a job managing these two stores uh, related to this business called Dirty South Automotive. The owner of it seems very shady, and according to Shanann's brother, during this time, she's making half a million dollars a year managing these stores. Jesus Christ. Good for Shanann, man. I, I don't know, man. So she ends up uh, mortgaging this massive house where it's only her now. The house, uh, the, the mortgage is for like $309,000, and she just this lady. Like, wow. no family, no nothing. She's just, fuck it. And she builds it from scratch. So it's not like, you know, one of these McMansions where she's just like, I'll take it. She's like, this is exactly what I want. Making a ton of dough. Um, So she links up with Chris Watts, okay? And they determined that, like, all right, they don't want to set up shop out in Colorado. And Shanann has friends, I'm sorry, in North Carolina. Now, Shanann has friends um, in Colorado. And she's like, all right, I think this might be a nice place for us. So she's not leaving yet. She says she has to tie up loose ends in North Carolina before she can come out to Colorado. I don't know what that entails, Jake. Somebody's pants. (laughs) Tied it up. Yeah, there's a loose end she's got to address. 
She's got to tie somebody's pant legs together <laughs> while they're passed out. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about, brother. Uh, so she sends Chris Watts out to Colorado to live with her friends, and he's living in their basement. Um, uh, the Dietzes, Jenna and Charlie Dietz. So he goes out to live with them. Like, he's just doing what he's told, and this is going to be a common theme throughout their relationship. Up, and, up, yeah. and, up until the, the murders... I feel bad for this guy. This man got sent Dude. to Colorado. He got sent, and he, he just snapped. went with it. That's crazy. He was bitch boy the entire relationship, and he snapped. Pussy but husband with bitch wife. I listen. I could see snapping, but I think the decision was premeditated. So I don't know if we're on the same page as the same definition of snapping. Yeah, like if we'll get to that, yeah. but I, I do think that to a degree, but. Yeah, he just took it, dude. And then finally he went off. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, brother, you had me until you killed the kids. Y- yeah. Like. Yeah. Any murder for me. But I just want to <laughs> <laughs> clarify that now. In fact, I'll take 10 of whatever Shanann is selling. Um, <laughs> but. Um, yeah, so she sends him out to Colorado. And uh, he's got a job working at an automotive dealership at a Ford place. And that's not good enough for her. She wants him to take college classes. He's not a college guy, but he's like, fuck it. I'll just do it. And he's taking a psychology class. Yeah. She tell him what major to be she, or just she go tell, take classes? Bro, she tells him exactly what to take, what to do, what, to, what fucking supplements to take, what to do around the house. Are they the same age or is she like way older? Oh, that's a great question. I don't know yeah. that. Suddenly I see why she was divorced. Yeah. <laughs> Dude. She has to build a house from scratch, then a husband from scratch. It's so fucking That's bad. That's crazy. Jake, there was an instance where I read about where um, one of his acquaintances came to pick him up to take him to the airport for a work trip, and he was not allowed to leave the house until he was finished cleaning the basement. My God, dude. We're going to be late for our <laughs> fucking flight, dude. I, it's, I'm telling you, I'm on his side until he kills the kids. <sighs> <laughs> So he's in Colorado. <laughs> this jury said the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> but dude, so he's taking this class and he's got to put together a presentation on relationship deterioration. He's got he's got to record it and he's got to have an audience. So the Dietz is call some of their friends over and say like, look, Shanann's husband's got to give this presentation. We, we need a handful of people here. They get nine people to sit in their fucking house and they video record him giving a presentation on a relationship deterioration. It was once on YouTube. It is no longer on YouTube. Yeah, I'm sure it has to be somewhere. Somebody's With got screen it. Screen grabs and all that. I stuff. could not find it, but um, there was a Swedish proverb which he ended the presentation on. It was like a double joy is a shared joy, but a double double sorrow is not a shared sorrow. The second part doesn't make sense to me. But I get the first part. I think he just butchered the Swedish proverb. Yeah, I think it was supposed to go, yardy, dardy, yardy. <laughs> <laughs> That's a Swedish chef. Speaking of that, there was a loose chicken in my neighborhood today. <laughs> Did you catch it? I was thinking the Swedish chef might have been a foot. <laughs> Man. Did you know what he got grade-wise? I'm sure I, he gets I an honorary know. A now. I don't, but um, Shanann commented, great job, babe. On the no. YouTube. Yes. <laughs> no. Why, did he want that to be public? Did it have to be? I don't know if it had to be, but they definitely had to film it to he be submitted to. He didn't know how to unlist it on YouTube? <laughs> <laughs> Was it like uh, telling of their relationship or anything significant like that? No, I think the one the thing that is telling is that she made him take the course. I mean, like, was he speaking about them in front of this group of people? Like him and his, him and Shanann. According to, like, man. what the presentation detailed. It was like, it, it fits what ends up happening in their relationship to a T. Now, at this time, this is 2012, so I don't think the wheels are falling off yet. Okay. But it's basically a play-by-play. And I, I guess, like, most relationships end up falling apart in similar ways. There's only a handful of ways that shit can fuck up. And they don't have kids yet, right? They no, they don't. kids? Okay. Yeah. So this is 2012, and... Um, Wait, I think I found it. What did you find, Jake? The YouTube video? Yeah. Chris, communication speech, relationship deterioration. Play it. Let's see. Maybe you got blocked. <laughs> they know what you're up he was to. You're doing too much good research. Oh, hold on. Here's an Expedia ad. <laughs> S- 
Speaking of Expedia. We like Expedia. Yeah, we do. We love Expedia here at the podcast. You remember, Jake, I don't think that's uh, (laughs) (laughs) it. Sorry, I'm playing a game now. (laughs) It was a zombie game with tanks. I'm doing my communication speech for uh, Brenda Armantrout. And uh, welcome to Brookville, Colorado. All right, we're going to put the link for this in the show description, but great work, Furman. Thank you. Um, Does it say how long that version has been out? Let's see. 11 years ago. Okay. Perfect, Furman. Nice. Yeah. I'm looking for not newest. I want to see that comment. That's crazy. But, yeah. Um, all right, so he gives that presentation. Shortly after that, Shanann comes from North Carolina to live with him in Colorado, and they take out a... Sorry, I just saw a comment. What does it say? <laughs> it, says, it says, you're giving us relationship advice? <laughs> Keep it. <laughs> How many likes does it have? <laughs> it has 1,000 likes <laughs> and 18 replies. <laughs> Dude, I wish there was a way that you could show him that in prison. Oh, there is something that's stuck in his craw in prison. It was a rumor that somebody put out about him that you could tell just is fucking crushing him and there's nothing he can do about it. And it's very funny. Oh, no. I'm going to get to it later on. It's so funny. And the guy that's perpetuating it is the last guy that you want starting a rumor about the two of you. Is he a fellow inmate? No. Okay. It's just a um, a profoundly gay man with cartoonishly puffy lips. <laughs> <laughs> it started a cabin rumor about them. And he's not letting it go. But Shanann comes to live out there with him, and they take out a massive mortgage on a house in a place called Frederick, Colorado. Okay. And this is the house, um, the last house that they lived in. Beautiful neighborhood. Um, it's an up-and-coming development, and uh, it's way out of their price range, but they say, fuck it, they get it anyway. Now, at the time, all right, so they're engaged. She makes him buy her a $10,000 engagement ring. And this is going to be a common thread throughout the relationship. She's always, um, they're both always overextending themselves financially for the purpose of just uh, keeping up airs. Yeah. There's one other element here which contributes to the uh, discord, which is she's constantly at war with his family. Oh, my God. This lady sucks. I know, dude. And in November, they get married. Rest in peace. I'm sorry. (laughs) The Watts family is not invited to the wedding because she hates them. You Dude. fucking kidding Dude. me? I'm telling you. Like, is if so that's she not- Scientology this guy out of his fucking family? Yeah, and he just went along with it because yeah, he's dude. a little pussy ass bitch boy. Yeah, he was emotionally abused for this relationship. Man, I should have been his defense I think attorney. So too. Jake, you're really good with him. Thanks, Mike. Except for them. Yeah. Kids part. Yeah, that's yeah. Mm-hmm. But again, Jake's a great father. Jake could teach him how to be a good father. You know, just because... I don't know if he's going to get a second chance. <laughs> I don't know, man. Just because you crashed one car doesn't mean you can't buy another. Jake, Is you there with a me? case of a Jesus person Christ. murdering their family and getting a second chance at making a new family? I don't know, but I want to find out. <laughs> Hopefully not, but... <laughs> Sounds like you're going to have some secondary research this week. <laughs> um, you know, it's related note. It's always stunned me that Casey Anthony never had another kid. One, that she never got into anything porn-related, and two, that she never had another kid, just to, to everybody. I think the porn thing might be Not out of late. spite, right? And no good, no doctor in the right mind will deliver her baby. <laughs> They're like, they took a Hippocratic oath. They're like, we can't No, come on. You have to. Out. It's like, even... Yeah, the doctors, they might be in shotgun formation taking that kid. <laughs> you might not take a direct snap, but, like, it you might, will. It might be a running on. play. <laughs> the doctor, yeah. You got it. You got to take it, man. It's a fake toss. Yeah. Uh, she tosses a man. No fake tosses in her playbook. <laughs> I meant the doctor. Omaha, <laughs> uh, um, uh, Omaha. Kill, kill, kill. Um, all right, sorry. Back to their wedding. <laughs> He's making play calls <laughs> for this. All right, I'm audibling back to this podcast now. <laughs> Dude, at their wedding, Chris Watts does something very endearing. What do you think he does? Now, he's an introvert. <clears throat> he sings a song to her. That's a good guess. That is a very good guess. Uh, I feel like he does the whole thing where he takes the bouquet off her leg in front of everyone with his teeth. <sighs> um, I don't know if I ever told you guys this, but... Um, I had to put my aunt's garter on. What? I know, dude. Bef- like in front of everyone? 
Uh, she got married in my house, so we did it in my sister's bedroom. So for the photographer? No. Oh, Wait. God. I know. Wait, what? I know, Furman. But I just wanted to add that because it seemed like it made sense. Um, so what he does <laughs> is he does a routine from one of her favorite movies, which is Magic Mike. He does a Magic Mike routine for his new wife. Whoa. I know. Does he strip? Um, as much as you can at a wedding. Not down to dick out. <laughs> That's fucking bizarre. I, yeah. He had a pasty on the tip of his penis. <laughs> <laughs> it had a fucking bow tie on it. <laughs> but they get married. Uh, they're just compounding credit card debt. And they're just spiraling out of control financially, but they're just like, fuck it. We're going to start having kids. They have their first baby. Did in. the business get moved out there? Her, like the business she was doing in North Carolina? She's, no, she's doing like part-time jobs. I think when she gets to Colorado, she's working at like a children's hospital overnight doing like a, at like a call center. Okay. So she hasn't gotten into the uh, no, not yet. level market right. shit yet? Not yet. Okay. Yeah. So she's still like putzing around trying to find, you know, her space, which... Again, just adds to the murkiness of her previous career where she was reportedly making half a million dollars a year. It's like, like yeah, yeah. if you you're successful save? at that, why not find something related to that yeah. that would help you maintain this lifestyle? Yeah. How can you not parlay it with the internet? I don't know, yeah. man. But yeah, she's working at like a fucking call center for fucking fucked up kids. Um. That's the call center for fucked up kids. <laughs> yes. We're accepting donations on behalf of these fucked up children. We're having a telethon at the end of the month. <laughs> um, yeah, we're, we're going to repair them live on air. But... Um, <laughs> uh, how'd you get all fucked up, Jimmy? <laughs> hey, take a seat. No, you already uh, are sitting in your my wheelchair. My dad pushed me off a cliff. <laughs> and my mom only feeds me Mountain Dew. <laughs> <laughs> um, Chris gets a job uh, A decent paying job Working for this place called uh, Anadarko Petroleum He's like some kind of like uh, Oil testing technician He'll go out to oil sites And he'll make sure None of the fucking lines are busted And make sure shit's running The way that it should be mm -hmm. That and sucks Because he wanted to be a NASCAR guy Yeah he left the automobile industry completely for this yeah i, I mean, mean if it's a better paying gig for sure yeah and this i mean for me this seems like a fun job where you know you're just you don't have to deal with a lot of people you're yeah. just you can get lost in your work yeah drive a truck around to different sites it's kind of but a see, dream dude, yeah Colorado's so beautiful happy. dude yeah. i think he was happy doing what he was doing but he got pushed into this and now it's I'm like, with you Furman. yeah i believe you brother um yeah so he gets this job he's making like sixty thousand dollars a year doing this Oh, that's it's, not as much as I thought he was making. It's decent money, but at the same time for the lifestyle they're living, it's not nearly enough. Yeah. Um, in 2015, now with all of their financial troubles that you're aware of now, they have this massive mortgage, this big house. They have a new baby too. To help with the new baby, Shanann's like, I need my parents to come live with me. So she has her parents come from North Carolina Ooh. to come live with them and they bring their fucking dogs too uh they don't like sell their house they're gonna go back to north carolina eventually i don't know um i would imagine they sold whatever they had if they if they were owners of the house because i know the dad had to get a new job out there okay so wow yeah just an extremely fucked up situation so in addition to all the fucking troubles you're dealing with with being a new parent yeah drowning in debt having a demanding what not a fucking yeah, no, more than demanding wife. Yeah. yeah, sounds like one of the worst spouses you could have. And no now, doubt. Now you can't even like let off steam at home when you're alone because your in laws are right there and your yeah. dogs are watching yeah. you masturbate in the garage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how fucked up is it when it's not even your dog watching you jack off? <laughs> yeah, it's someone else's dog. Yeah, your dog in laws watching yeah. you crank it. <laughs> <laughs> Rover and all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, that might be the definition of sadness. <laughs> <laughs> I know he was picking up those dogs' shit, too. Yeah, no doubt they were making That him old do man it. was working. <laughs> I know. That guy was at work. He's probably yep. walking these dogs between fucking on his lunch shift, <laughs> his lunch break. Dude, they live with them for over a year. Wow. I would figure that if they come from North Carolina, you're yeah. going to get them for a fucking full mm. year. Yeah. 
Just imagine being that demanding of a woman that not only your husband's family isn't invited to the wedding, you make your husband go back to college. Now you make your parents move across the country Mm -hmm. just to watch your kids. Mm -hmm. Make your husband live in the dorm with a roommate. (laughs) (laughs) That's a lot, man. I know, man. And she goes by Shanann. Yes. Yeah, that number one. Yeah. Like, I'm not saying your name that way. <laughs> one of the book- and I'm not listening to a fucking word you say <laughs> if you pronounce Shannon like that. Uh, I read a book called The Perfect Father uh, by a guy named John Glatt. And in the book, they say that she referred to herself as Shanann because she claimed she was named after the, uh, the group, the Shananas. That's what I've been like fake calling her this whole time. Shanann. Shanann. Well, maybe you should have married her. Wait, like Bowser from Shanana? <laughs> I guess that would make sense, yeah. <laughs> like the goofy, fake... I, uh, I only know Bowser creatures. from Shanana from the Adam Sandler song. Yeah. I've never seen... It's a band from like the 70s, right? They're making yeah. like, like fake greaser kind of... I'm not familiar with Look, them. I know it's a real thing. Okay. Shanana. Wait, dude, she wanted people to know she was named uh, after are you, fucking... Are you thinking Manamana? <laughs> Wait, did I just have a Dr. Pepper? Shut up and up. Oh, man, is that him? She na na. Jesus Christ, man. You want to name your kid after oh, that? Ron Gallo? Oh, John Gallo. Whew, Man. R.I.P. Bowser, man. In June 2015, they declare bankruptcy. <laughs> oh, no, well, he should be dead, man. That's a dead face, man. That's a dead face. That is not Bowser from Shannon is not a face that looks like he should be long for this world, man. He's trying to sell tickets right now. How does he live? Leave Bowser alone. He looks like a character that was cut out of Greece in those younger pictures. Oh, he returns to headline holiday party. That's pretty sweet. Jay, cut out of Greece is how Italians are born. <laughs> It's a T-bird. <laughs> <laughs> they declare bankruptcy uh, in January of 2016. That's when Shanann gets into selling these supplements uh, called Thrive. Oh, okay. I haven't heard of this one. Yeah. <gasps> yeah, this isn't... Um, yeah, when I think of, of fucking food scams, I think of Herbalife, which I got roped yeah. into. And uh, uh, Just buying it or you tried to sell it too? Both. Damn, really? Yeah, man. This Did they try to get you to open up your own store? Yeah, well, whatever that means, like selling on your own. I know they targeted the Latino community specifically. I bought it from a Latino. Mm. Latina. She was trying to get back into the back out of the community. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah I, I was somebody who opened up a shop and got like just completely fucked on it. Oh no! Because yeah, nobody's coming to that fucking storefront. Oh, to, like an actual like physical store? Yeah. Oh, oh my no. god! Yes. Yeah. Like lost fifty no. grand, I think. No, I think I bought like a hundred twenty dollars worth of shit. It was like, dude, do you remember? You might be too young for this because I think I'm like seven years older than you guys. But do you remember something they used to hawk on Nickelodeon? I think it was called Sweet Pickles, uh-uh. or it might have been PBS. It was this like sounds very predatory yeah. already. <laughs> yeah, I had to meet a man behind the <laughs> library. But no, there was this like. Can learning- I have any of your sweet pickles? <laughs> <laughs> you like gherkin? <laughs> but there was this this learning program that they sell. I think it was on PBS. Now it's called Sweet Pickles, and it was just like a kit that you buy. You had to pay w- whatever money we didn't have, and I never got it. Came in a little box. Yeah, it was a little box, uh-huh. and you got all kinds of cool shit that kids wanted. Um. But yeah, I got one of those for Herbalife, and I had to meet this Latina lady in um, in Borders Books. She sold it to me. I gave her the money, and I got it. And uh, I just could not bring myself to bother people. I, w- I would. You got the kit to to start selling stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would rather cut the head of my dick off than bother somebody. Yes, exactly. Dude. So I was like, that I was not naturally a thing for me. I was naturally a mark to buy it. Yeah, but to sell it, I just don't have that in me. What's so fucked up is you buy it, but you're not just buying the box. In order to buy the box, you have to buy, like, a membership. Are you talking about marriage? (laughs) But but no, there's, like, a whole bunch of registration fees that you have to pay in order to be allowed to buy the box. You can't just buy a tube of Herbalife from the lady? You can, I could, yeah. Yeah, yeah, That's what I started. I think I bought, like, some kind of, like, powdered milkshake from her. Yeah. And she's like, you know, this this is, like, a nice part-time job. She's like, I've been doing it a while. I make I make decent money. And at the time, 
fuck, I was making, I think, 80 bucks a day at the job that I met her at. So it's like, I had nothing. I couldn't yeah. meet my You're own trying bills. trying to pay in coins. Like, you know, <laughs> like, a Coke dealer wouldn't take this. Will you take this? Yeah. <laughs> Rubbing Herbalife on my gums. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I mean, I, I bought it, and it was 120 bucks that I wish I had back immediately. Um, Did you end up doing all the stuff that you bought? Like uh, Probably. Like, I don't even remember, man. I think yeah. it's just, it's, it's all so expensive, and it's like... Would you I, just do it? Will you mix it with water and then work out? Is the thing? This, no, this was just like a, a meal replacement. Hashtag. Yeah. So it's a vanilla milkshake. <laughs> yes, dude. She would constantly post shit like that. Um, once she started getting into slanging this shit, like she was posting constantly. She was going live, messaging everybody. Dude, she was messaging, uh, not messaging, but she was bothering the um, director of her kid's school, like in the fucking drop off line. Could you imagine? Jesus, Christ, I know, man, dude. Yeah, the kids went to this school called the Primrose School, and it cost, for the two of them to go, it was $25,000 a year. Oh, my God. And he makes sixty, and I think she made similar money around they this time. They can't afford it. I know. And it's like constantly running up credit card debt. They're cash poor. Like, everything is just a mess, and you can see they're spiraling toward something even worse happening than what is currently happening. Now, because... She is clearly somebody who gets off on projecting an image of herself that she wants other people to believe whether or not, you know, that's the reality. This is f- so fitting for her uh, because one of the a couple of the benefits they have are that for however many you sell, you get a certain automobile allowance for the month. So it's like, all right, if you sell like $8,000 worth of shit, they'll pay like $100 toward your car payment. Specifically. Yes. It's called like, like a car allowance to to or your something. Car. Yeah. Yeah. And it seems That's like the kind of thing where it's like you just show them your documentation. They're like, all right, here, here's your car yeah. payment for the month. Okay. She's doing well enough to like have her car paid for. So at one point she's like, uh, should I get like an Audi or a Lexus? And of course her fucking dumb bitch friends are like, oh my God, that's so cool. How do you get this stuff? And on top of this too, they're constantly getting trips to these fucking, these, uh, these fucking co- these conferences that they do all over mm-hmm. town where it's just like they meet and then they talk about how they can rope more people into mm-hmm. doing this shit. Mm-hmm. So she loves being able to show that she's traveling all over the fucking place. And she ends up hooking Chris Watts into it, too. Now, I mentioned, like, he's, he's an extreme introvert, other than the murders. Yeah. Um, she has him bothering his coworkers. So it's like he'll go out to fucking job sites where it's just him and another dude all fucking day. And he'll walk over to fucking pitch the guy on buying fucking Thrive. I wonder how that went. I wonder as an introvert. If it was like, so you heard of this Thrive stuff, you know? Or <laughs> We're really it, thriving out here, aren't we? <laughs> or if it was like, you know, like, hey, man, I don't know if you've heard of this stuff. Like, if he made it like, I know I'm bothering you yeah, by asking. Yeah. Or if he would like That's definitely stepped up and yeah. became the, the salesman that his fucking bitch wife definitely wanted him not. to yeah. be. No, yeah, the, definitely yeah, the first. I think so. Yeah. But the, in a lot of the pictures, I noticed they're wearing like these weird patches. And that was part of the Thrive Grift is it says, like, all right, you get a day's worth of fucking vitamins for this patch. It's like you get a day's worth of minerals for this patch. God, it was just patches? Dude, no, it's not just patches, but it's, like, also shit that you ingest. Put on these temporary tattoos <laughs> and see how great you feel. Uh, oh, this dinosaur tattoo? <laughs> it's like, yeah, I, I get all my electrolytes from this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, dude, he, um, he's fat, like, when they're together. He's, um, he's- The pirate ship is magnesium. <laughs> You're talking about like uh, you put the like a Nicorette patch thing, yeah, yeah or like a like, sew-on patch looks, for no, your clothing. No, it looks like uh, yeah, like a Nicorette patch. There's some yeah. that are like square shaped. There's some that are rectangular shaped. I don't know how I feel about ingesting my vitamins that way, dude. That's yeah. kind of weird. The whole fucking right? thing is weird, and it's especially weird when they're taking them like in family pictures. And everything she posts is about this fucking company and all these supplements. And now she has him start up a Facebook account, just constantly posting about this shit. And he doesn't want fucking social media. Yeah. He doesn't want to be bothered with any of this fucking shit. But she makes him sell, and there is a benefit to it, though, for him. Before he starts taking this shit, he's 245 pounds. Um, within a few months, he gets down to 180. God damn. So he's doing pretty well. Now, he's also working out like a fucking animal. Yeah, and he's fucking starving all the time. Yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so he gets down, and he looks great. So naturally, when a married man gets in shape, he's got to fuck somebody that's not his wife, Jake. 
You know, damn. Talk. Uh, yeah, I, that's why I haven't gotten shape yet. <laughs> I've been going to the gym, just not in shape. You know, I don't want to deal with the temptation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ladies, stay away. You know? Yeah. And this is especially fucked up too. So he's got a Mustang that he loves dearly. To keep up appearances, he ma- she makes him trade in his Mustang for a Lexus. What the fuck? A Mustang's already reasonably expensive. I know, man. Yeah. Like 50 grand at least, right? Dude, yeah. and she gets him like one year for his birthday, she gets him like a fucking supercharger for his Mustang. And she makes a big thing about it. And then in fucking uh, 2016, she films this. Everything is fucking filmed and posted on either Facebook or Instagram. Yeah. It's his birthday. He loves Metallica. He's got a, a full back Metallica tat. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Really? Yeah. And uh, he opens his gift. It's a Metallica t-shirt and tickets to a Metallica concert. And uh, she posts like, man, this is this is up there with the supercharger I got him for like his fucking 28th birthday. All right. So it was a present for her. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So all her friends can ooh and ah over her. Wow. It's brutal, man. Jesus Christ, dude. <laughs> Apparently there was a video on her Facebook, though, of her filming him at the concert where he's singing along the Creeping Death. Oh, no. <laughs> Is that on the same YouTube page? <laughs> we'll look after. But, yeah, he's cooking. I mean, he's working out like a fucking animal. He's taking all this shit, so he's in great shape. Uh, in July of 2017, Jake, you're going to like this. He's in great shape. What do you think he does? I think he starts flexing. He does, man. Yeah? There's a lady... Who starts working at his company. Now, they all meet at a central location. <laughs> Do you mean like bodybuilder flexing? <laughs> I mean, or just flexing I in general? casually, but yeah. <laughs> I wish I didn't mean bodybuilder. Can you flex for us, Jake? Yeah. Whoa. You've been taking Thrive? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, he's alive. It's working. Folks. Jesus, Jay. Jay, tell them where they can buy it. I'm dizzy as hell. <laughs> but Furman, in July of 2017, he meets a lovely young lady by the name of Nikki Kessinger, who will end up becoming his side bitch. She works, she's like some kind of like like safety officer at the oil company that he works for. Not involved with the marketing shit at all. No, yeah, just totally separate. Totally separate. Yeah. This is just his world. And, um, yeah, it's like you got to think. You're a dude that's jacked. You're out in the fields all day looking at fucking oil rigs, just <laughs> pumping all day long. How can you not be super horny? You know? Walk around super hard. <laughs> just. Can't wait to drive through the desert in a minivan with you fellas. <laughs> just tearing through dungarees like a goddamn werewolf. <laughs> And he just falls in love. Why? Because she asked to sit down. Like no, it work. Jake initially, um, they don't even speak. Yeah. Nikki says that when she first became aware of him, like they would all meet at a centralized office, and his team would be sitting there waiting for their like morning briefing, and she would just come in to drop off her lunch in the fridge and walk out. Like she would just give a generalized good morning to everybody, but she didn't yeah. recall him speaking at all. Until like there was one point where. Um, I think beginning in 2018 where they start, he had to email her about something and then they started talking more. But initially there's no fucking weird shit. But, all right, so we're getting into 2018. Their debt's increasing, Jake and John. I forget that you're here sometimes. I know you never um, look at me or talk to me. <laughs> you know what I think it is? I think it's because I so easily get lost in your eyes. So you have to look at... My from, dead eyes. Yeah, I, no, I, I focus on his glasses. Well, he's got a couple of uh, couple centimeters of dirty glass in between <laughs> That's true. him They're and his very dreamy dirty. eyes. Oh, God, it makes me so horny, Jake. <laughs> Every week his glasses are dirtier. They, they just, they've seen some things. I want to cum those things up, man. They've seen a lot of things, but not a cleaning cloth. <laughs> Dude, so he's... um. In May of 2018, they have... Uh, no, I'm sorry, wait. So I'm going to back up a little bit. All right, so they have two kids by now. And um, they're traveling more and more for her fucking... The, comp- the company's called Lavelle. And the... That sells Thrive? Yeah, that sells mm-hmm. Thrive. Thrive is the actual product. Lavelle is the actual company. So they're traveling more and more for that. And he goes along with her too because he's selling this shit. And it's like he earns like some fucking perks but not as much as she does mm. but I think mo- more than anything else he's there for basically arm candy 
Are they taking uh, the whole family on planes no. to go to these things? No. Just those two are... Staying with the parents. Yeah, so the parents... Her parents come out twice a year, which is yeah, a massive financial strain on them. They don't have the money to come out there, but they do it just because she guilts them into coming out. Yep. I'd also like to add, too, that she has a bunch of, um, of uh, vaguely definable maladies that she's always complaining about. Um, there's uh, lupus, fibromyalgia, and migraines, which is like the holy trinity of fat lady problems. I have all three. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it explains why I'm so attracted to you, Jake. Yeah, Yeah, I just got fat lady bingo right there. But, dude, um, in addition to her constantly complaining about her made-up issues, like lupus, I guess, is probably the most uh, physically symptomatic. Like, she, you're exhibiting symptoms of that. Mm. Um, The kids are all... She's always posting about the kids being sick. Upon reading what I read about her describing the kids' illnesses... Like, it just reminds me of so much of a person in my family who clearly is a Munchausen mommy. This is the uh, Shanann or the yeah, grandmother? Yes, Sh- Shanann. Okay. Constantly posting about the kids being sick. Um, there's an issue where they briefly reconcile with Chris's parents, and she claims that the one kid has a peanut allergy, and she sweeps their kitchen for peanut-related products, and she finds one in, like, a fucking cabinet and goes ballistic on the parents, so they're no longer able to talk or able to see the kids. Jesus it's dude, it's Christ. fucking insane. In May of 2018, uh, she surprises Chris. He walks in the door from work one day, and she's wearing the shirt the shirt that says "Oops, we did it again." Oh no! Yep. Uh, took Warm a shit on the floor. No, <laughs> <laughs> was that the day Britney Spears got f- uh, freed from her conservatorship? <laughs> yeah, emancipated? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she's announcing that they're having their third baby. Which he cle- third baby, yeah. Oh my god. Which he clearly does not fucking want. At this time, I think uh, he's got a four, <gasps> four and a two year old. When they find out they're having a third, so in May of two thousand and eighteen, she makes this announcement, wow. and they're already barely able to keep their head above water yeah. with debt and everything. Yeah, and in the video, like he's seeming, he seems like he's putting on a good show. He's like, oh my god, like this is going to be great, this and that, but. At this point, you can see like he's making up his decision to to um, I don't know about bailing them yet, but he's definitely starting a relationship with the the other woman, Nikki Kessinger, Nikki. and uh, she's a lovely lady, man. Yeah, just um, pretty lady. Just you fall in love? I don't know about in love, but um, she's not a bad bitch. What's so. happening with those hands there? Yeah, what's, I don't you, even know what, I'm, what part of her are you uh, showing us. I thought you were shaking an imaginary <laughs> baby. I'm 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 also working on an oil rig right now. Are you doing the the cryptex from uh, from the uh, Angels and Demons yeah, book? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The first one, Da Vinci Code. This, is that this what you're doing? Uh, this is what I do during a lap dance. <laughs> <laughs> you stay here. You stay away. Yeah. You stay away yeah. from me, um, sir. You will not be able to solve the Rub- Rubik's cube that way. <laughs> In June of 2018, he goes to Nikki Kessinger, uh, says he has problems with an app that they had used to have that they had to use for their job. Okay, mm-hmm. and that kind of kicks things into high gear with her. Can you show me how to do this? Mm-hmm. Damn, you're so smart. Are you asking me or? Yeah. Oh yeah, Mike. Can you yeah. show me how to swing a golf club after this? <laughs> <laughs> I would love to. Uh, at this time, so this is the beginning of the summer. Uh, during the summer, his wife. Um, goes to North Carolina with the kids for a while. Okay, so he's back in Colorado, so he can kind of do he can kind of do what he wants. All right, like a while, like a vacate, like a week with like back home kind of thing, or like a she, month. Or- um, it's a couple weeks where okay. she ends up going, and wow. also too, like he's kind of checking out too. Like there are times where like she'll be calling and texting him nonstop, and he's just not responding because like he's making plans with this girl, and they're doing things together. Okay, and uh, what kind of things they doing? Uh, they go cool stuff, man. They go hiking, camping, sand dune surfing. Jesus Christ, yeah. this is great. Kind of bitch, you want? Oh my God, yeah. That's Found what I'm telling you. Soulmate. Yeah, like like I said, man. This this finally is- freed and experiencing <laughs> yes. the things that love can be. I know, and it's like good for him. Give and take, brother. All you had to do was leave. Yeah, 
And like she was, uh, um, unfortunately, one of the things that happened. Yeah, he did not have to kill anybody. I did forget about that. She was yeah. such a bitch. I forgot about that. Now he was lying to this girl. She knew that he was married, but he said that they were separated and that they were pretty far along in the complete separation process. And that she definitely wasn't pregnant with a third kid. I don't know, man. She he, he might have even been honest about that. All right, she's having another kid, but after that, we are through. We're definitely done. Like I, I swear. <laughs> Dude, one thing that she mentioned, too, like when they started dating was um, he came over with a box of open condoms. Um, what? Yeah, he like came out of the package. Like the box was already open. Oh, no, 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 no. Not just like. <laughs> 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 what you think about using these some of these this weekend, girl? <laughs> I got ten, well, nine because I lost one on the car doing this. Eeny, meeny, miny. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> So he meets up with his side bitch with a box of open condoms, and she's like, um, I know you're married, so I can't really complain too much, but are you having sex with other people? He's like, no, my wife, my wife makes me wear condoms. She's like, why does your wife make you wear condoms? He's like, she doesn't like a mess. I have AIDS. <laughs> so, dude, if that's true, in addition to all this controlling shit that she's doing, he also can't raw dog his wife. Well, then how do they get an accidental third kid? It might just be a, a fucking, she might sneak one on and tell him, hey, you can do it this time. Uh-huh. And he does it, and then it's like, oh, yeah, yeah you know that time yeah, you, you nutted, that mess. one time you nutted in me? She a fertile myrtle. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, guys, now, guys I, I bet you've been wondering why I've been texting you all weekend and referring to you as my <laughs> sexy empanadas. It's been very alarming, but I kind of like it. I spent the weekend referring to these two as my sexy empanadas. Ever since I read this text, one of the most unfortunate parts about murder is that when you go to trial, all of your texts are read. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and uh, during this, uh, there's this document which you can find online. It's a 2,000 page discovery document, which is everything that the, that the, uh, that the prosecution has. Mm-hmm. And part of what they, they include in this discovery document is all the text that they were sending back and forth. The mistress. Yeah, yeah. and it, it's also shit from Shanann to her friends about how Chris doesn't want to touch her anymore and also what Chris is is sending to his side bitch, Nikki. And one of the funnier texts that he sends her is that he refers to Nikki as his sexy empanada. I don't know if that is a... Um, that's a very introverted term. Um, I don't know if that's a... Uh, a body compliment that a woman wants. An empanada is kind of like a, a ravioli. That's true. Yeah. It's a ravioli of our southern neighbors. They you know? are delicious, though. I do love yeah. empanadas. You love empanadas? I do. Yeah, they're very good. I do. Oh, boys, you're in luck because I made you sexy empanadas. <laughs> Can you close your eyes for a minute? No. Please. <laughs> Why? I want to present them to you, but it requires uh, like me modifying one of the empanadas. You have modifying. to put sexy on it? Three of them are already sexy. One, oh, I got to no. sex up a little bit. He's what gonna... does that mean? Is there an icing drizzle on it to represent cum? Please just trust me. God, there's a, there's lingerie. Please just let us keep our eyes open. I bet you it's wearing lingerie. Thank you, Jake. Look, Jake's a good sport. Can you please just close your eyes for me? I, it's Jake's turn, honestly. Mike, let, be honest. Last time we closed our eyes, I got a pie in the face. I Jake can keep it. <laughs> I, yeah. I can keep my eyes open because my glasses are so dirty. <laughs> Here's your sexy empanadas. Oh, God. What's going on? (laughs) (laughs) Show show them to the camera. Which one did you just make? (laughs) The big one. (laughs) Can you see that in the camera? Oh, my God. Where did you get the other Jeff, put that closer to the camera. Oh, my God. That is disgusting. (laughs) I knew knew the sexiest empanadas uh, wang would have fallen. So I had to modify it. <laughs> but I thought you guys would enjoy some sexy empanadas. I would love one. It yeah. looks they fine. Do. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It well, looks you, edible. You want, Are you going to have one? I'll have one. Okay. Do you want to finish the episode? Then we'll enjoy a sexy empanada on That's the way out. That's fine. They all do right. look good, though. I know they do. Is one of them a breakfast sausage? I think they're all beef empanadas. No, the sausage, the big, uh, the big, um, the big sexy. Uh, those are all uh, penises, and that is a <laughs> black penis. <laughs> Thank you for clearing that up. I can't believe I didn't already know oh that. Oh, my God. So, sexy empanada, things are heating up with her. Yeah. So, he's referring to her as sexy empanada. In August is when she goes to North Carolina. Okay, so she goes there. 
And the because re- they're having problems kind of thing. Yeah, and I think also, like, uh, she's pregnant now, and yeah. she wants to feel closer to her family, so she goes there to stay with them. It's a shame that Thrive doesn't have a patch for relationships. <laughs> 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 really patch things up with mm-hmm. that. There, there is another supplement called Falter. <laughs> Patches are always coming off, and yeah. the, 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 the powder comes out the bottom of the packaging. Look, I didn't develop the fucking product, all right, man? <laughs> you just sold it for five years. Mm-hmm. So during this time, oh, yeah, there's one thing where he really ends up getting fucked up on, where he ends up going to dinner with his side bitch while his wife's in North Carolina. And she's always, he's, up until this point, like anytime he uses anything for his personal use, he'll use his company card. However, at this point, like, you can tell that he's planning on leaving his wife and making it known because I get the impression he wants this confrontation. He goes to, like, a bar and grill, and he charges their meal to their joint credit card. So she sees a $68 bill on their statement. She's like, all right, her and her friends, like, dude, her friends are just as bad as she is because her and her friends go on the website to yeah. look how much, like, okay, she asked him what he had. He's like, salmon Holy and a damn. beer. Shit, They're dissecting, yep. man. She's like, well, salmon and a beer would cost 30 bucks. Why is it 68? Whoa. What if you got one for lunch the next day, huh? Um, what if yeah, you're yeah. hungry at midnight? If he knows that she knows the amount, then how is he fucking that up with that he's, response, you know? He's not fucking it up. Well, yeah, I guess it, if like he's lying about it. Yeah, he tra- should know oh, yeah. to be like, oh, I got a bunch of food. I was fucking starving last yeah. night. I think had in, the munchies. I I'm smoking decide. weed now. Yeah, yeah it's I, legal here. I could picture initially him being like, fuck it. I hope she finds out. But then as soon as that bitch calls, he's that's like, what I'm uh, yeah, I, um, dude, I had, say you had four fucking beers. Yeah. Like, yeah to I me, know. that's normal. Yeah. If you go out, <laughs> yeah. things got out of hand. Yeah, so you get a piece of salmon and a bunch of beers. And that is by funny. Yourself. My initial thought was getting something for tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. or like an appetizer and two entrees. I couldn't decide. <laughs> <laughs> you know how many times I've done that? Chicken cheesesteak. Mm. Oh, I want a chicken cheesesteak. So <laughs> oh God, you make me so hungry and horny, Jake. <laughs> Dude, well, lucky for you, we got sexy empanadas. For oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Like, Are you going to sit on yours first? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to sit on it, and then I'm going to make you close your eyes again, and one of you is going to eat that one. <laughs> Dude, like I mentioned about the text messages becoming public and the entire world getting to see your sexy talk, they also looked into search history, and they looked into his side bitch's search history. Oh, no. Yeah, I mean, it's like... Dude. It only makes you me- just because you fucked a guy who murdered his family. You got to get exposed. That sucks. That's Dude, brutal. There's a lot of pervert cops out there, and I think they just want to read shit that gets them hard because this Dude. stuff definitely did get me hard. This this search history reveal is would be the death of me. Mm-hmm. If this shit ever like I don't know how do they do it, bro? And if we get to two thousand patrons, <laughs> no, no, we're gonna no. read Jake's search no, history no, no, while no. he's trying to get it's out of the foam pit. <laughs> <laughs> I think we just added another <laughs> yeah, level. Gonna, no, let's not do that. Man, you guys are great. Just uh, I'm gonna go through and mass delete everything. <laughs> a couch full of ideas, man. <laughs> but dude, she um, they look at her search history and fucking two days before the murders, which is like I think might be the last day that they're together. All right. Wait, he's got the kids at this point. She doesn't have the kids with her. My bad. So he's having a um. All right. So this is. A babysitter is coming to watch the kids. Wait, this is, you want to say this before you say her search history? Uh, Yes, because, all right, so the wife's in North Carolina, but he's got the kids. Okay. Damn. Is he, will he still meet up if he has the kids? He gets a babysitter. And this was very thoughtful of him uh, on this particular night. All right, I'll get to that in a second. But August 11th, he goes to meet a co worker in a shopping center parking lot with the kids because he's got a fire stick and the guy's going to show him, like, how to jailbreak it, I guess. And while they're talking, the guy gets a text from the company saying, like, oh, shit, there's a problem at Site 11. Uh, it can wait, but one of us, meaning one of the team members, is going to have to go out there and address it. Address it. Mm-hmm. And then before they part ways, Chris is like, you know what? I'll fucking do it. I'll go out there Monday morning. However, Monday morning is also the oldest daughter's first day of kindergarten. So he's already made plans to take her to school. So at this point, this shows premeditation. All right, so this is two days before the murders. So him making the decision after he's already agreed to take the little girl to her first day of kindergarten 
volunteering to go out to that site to fix that problem shows that, like, all right, he's already written off kindergarten. Okay. No, that's just a, how many times have you forgotten something that, that your kid has to do? Yeah. What's your first day of kindergarten? Yeah, no, I, I think that's different. You're telling me he got so excited that he had a jailbroken fire stick that he just was like, bye bye, family. No, like he found out there. Hello, were, Nikki. Now this was a, an alibi for him. Okay. I okay. see. What you're, okay, now I see. What In you're his saying. mind, he doesn't strike me as the brightest guy, which is another way that I relate to him. Um, but th- to me, like this was like this is like the aha moment where he's like, okay, this would make sense because when you find out how he disposes of his family, yeah. this makes a lot of sense. Okay. But naturally, you're going to be fucking suspect, her prime suspect number one. But in his retard brain, he doesn't know that. So he gets fire stick taken care of, takes the kids home, has a babysitter come over. Um, this was very sweet. And uh, he ends up getting the babysitter Domino's. That's nice. Yeah. I wouldn't say sweet. I would say, uh, yeah, nice. Yeah. Sweet's a little. It seems <clears throat> par for the course for. Yeah. I don't know. Like, appropriate. Yeah. I mean, it's a nice thing to do for somebody. But this is the first domino set in motion, Jake. Oh, no. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but this was the first domino that <laughs> fell. Um, he, they're, he's preparing for a big date with Nikki this night. Mm-hmm. That's why he gets the babysitter. She's not an overnight babysitter, so he's only got a limited time frame to God. take this lady out and clap her cheeks. I feel like we're watching this whole situation on a Domino's murder tracker. Now. <laughs> <laughs> the idea is in yeah. the head. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you can order a pizza to anywhere now, right? It's called Pinpoint Delivery. We're not sponsored by Domino's, but we are fans. Oh, man, I haven't had Domino's in a while. I ordered it last week. Just threw out two slices today oh, from last why'd week. Why'd you do that? Uh, it was past their prime over a week. But well, why wouldn't you eat them uh, I previously? Just, had forgotten about them. Mm. Sometimes I wake up and I wait so long to eat that I just have to go to Wendy's immediately or I start screaming. I get it. You know? <laughs> Sometimes it's easier to leave the house knowing that something hot and fresh is going to be in my hand than to reheat something that's a few days old in the fridge. I get know? it. Like a sexy, sexy empanada. I can't even just say like a- I'm sick here. I'm just so excited. <laughs> so they have a big date this night. And because he ends up doing what he did... They confiscate his side bitch's computer later on, and they're able to see that on this date night, before he picks her up, she's doing some uh, surfing on the internet. Uh, what do you think is something that she searches for? Um, anal pleasures for men. Uh, on, a, on a porn website, she's looking up threesomes, double penetration, and interracial. Uh, horny. The devil's threesome. Yeah. And then she also Googles the words, prepare for anal. My God. I which was is, fucking dead on. Yeah. Anal which pleasures. Which is the title of Jake Matera's new book. <laughs> 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 but, I mean, bro, if, if, like, if, you, if you have a side bitch that's willing to go through all this, like, man, just leave your wife and go have fun with this lady. I mean, you're sand surfing, you're camping, you're hiking. She's preparing for anal for you. Well, yeah. for you and a friend, it sounds like. <laughs> also found in her search history was uh, how to get rid of your entire family. This is not Chris Watts. <laughs> well, dude. Um, <laughs> yeah, can I borrow your phone real quick? <laughs> yeah. All right, so I left out a very important detail. Um, Chris murders. Watts. All right. So shortly before this, Chris Watts also goes out to North Carolina to meet up with his wife. I think, all right, the wife went out there with the kids, and then he went out to North Carolina to pick the kids up so she could have some time alone and brought the children back to Colorado. Okay. See, right. that's the kind of shit. Like, I mean, God. It's I, insane. Rest, in, rest her soul, all that, whatever I need to say to make it okay. But, like, to make him come from Colorado to go pick up the kids mm-hmm. because you need time alone is wild. Dude, he... um. During a meeting with his sister, it's normal for him to do this. And by this, I mean write letters to his sister. He's very close with her. On the last letter that he leaves with her, the letter says, and just if anything ever happens to the kids, Shanann did it. So before he returns to Colorado, he leaves that that letter with his sister. 
And I don't know if she just, if he told her, don't open this for a while or what, but that's included in his last letter to his sister. <clears throat> don't open this till you hear my name on the news. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which is weird because I've, this is such a recent case and I've yeah. never um, heard of this. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fucked up. Netflix put out a good documentary on it. Yeah, it's heartbreaking. Um, but, um, all right, so as we're getting... All right, so we're into the second week in August. So, uh, can we go back to the date? Do you know anything about that night? I don't know if she got butt fucked. <laughs> <laughs> this guy skips right to the end. <laughs> Let me romance you for a minute. <laughs> where did they end? Did you know where they went? Is this a record I, of that? This was the date. I skipped around a bit. This was the date where they went to that bar and grill where they charged the $68 bill. Okay. And this, let me remind you, you're under oath. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, so do you know, was that like the first time where they were willing to go out in public together or had they been doing that? They had been camping, hiking, and they did that sand surfing. That's all kind of secluded. Yeah. You'd be, you wouldn't yeah, this place, risk seeing someone you know in your real life right. at a lot of those places. Dude, this, yeah. this bar. But going to that bar and grill, I feel like is the, and then yeah. with him charging it on that yep. uh, joint card yep. does seem like a. An actual statement of yes. like, yeah, I don't care who finds out about this. Yeah, you know, changing I'm ready. his relationship status. To, it's complicated. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, clearly. Yeah. yeah, the bank statement ain't the only statement he's making. So yeah, so she comes from North Carolina, and then she's got a Thrive trip. So she's going to head out to um, for a weekend trip to um, Arizona. She goes to Phoenix with a friend, and uh, I also want to add to one of her favorite books. What do you think it was, Shanann? Shenan's Fifty Shades um, of Grey. Eat, pray, love. How to win friends and influence people. Get the fuck out yeah. of here. Yeah, she posted a picture on Facebook. She's finally like, on the other side of the coin. <laughs> 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 we need a running tally board <laughs> on the other side of the. I'm not sure how Victor the murders happened, won. but rope. I'm a. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So she loved that book as well, and uh, she utilized that to rope people into this. This uh, marketing scheme. Now that seems like the appropriate use for that book. Yeah, yeah, it is. Pretty, that yeah. seems like what it's yeah. meant for mm -hmm. is somebody to be like, oh, okay, and now I'm going to yeah. thrive off this information for money. Oh, I like that. That it's was a, an accident. Oh, a couple of fucking real idiots on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I got fucking sexy empanadas in the brain. Look at those. Are they in this shot? Oh, just the big penises. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so she goes to Phoenix, Arizona. And she returns early on the morning of August 13th. She gets home, I think around 2 a.m. maybe. Chris is already home. He's asleep. Uh, the kids are asleep too. She gets in. And Chris says, when, when she came in, they had sex, which was odd because they, they would just never have sex anymore. And after they had sex... He's like, all right, I want to break up with you. Goodbye, sex. Yeah, which is a very devious thing to do to a lady. And did he use those words for his wife and mother of two and a half children? I want to say goodbye to you. What did I say? I want, I to, want break to break up. up. Oh, I don't know. <clears throat> well, what else would you say? I want a divorce. I'm leaving oh, you. Yeah. Like, oh, break yeah. up is like a very yeah, specific boyfriend, girlfriend yeah, that's yeah. thing, you know? Well, I've never been married, so I wouldn't know. <laughs> I also would have to break up with the mother of my child. Oh, nice, dude. Wee, 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 wee. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we broke up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, John and I are bachelors now. <laughs> We actually we actually just bought the Watts' house. <laughs> so we're looking for five we roommates. We not afford it. Yeah, please. <laughs> mm. All right, so it's kind of murky how things transpire at this point, but I know for a fact that he tells her he doesn't want to be in a relationship anymore. He also, all right, I believe it's before he has this conversation with her but he attempts to kill both of the kids by smothering them. Wait, what? Dude, he thinks he's already killed the kids. All right? He thinks he's killed their ki strangled the kids in the bed and then goes his in. His hands or the pillow? Uh, he uses a blanket. He uses a so mesh. So suffocation. It would be suffocation mesh. more so than strangulation. He thinks he's already uh, ended the kids' lives. He, go he tells his wife, 
that he wants to end a relationship. A fight ensues. He ends up mounting her and strangling her. And the way he describes it is pretty fucking spooky because he talks about like looking into her eyes. He says she didn't even fight back. He just remembers mascara running down the side of her face and her eyes becoming increasingly more bloodshot. Jesus Christ. And by his estimation, it took anywhere between two and four minutes to kill her. So when he's done this, um, he starts wrapping her body up in a sheet once he's killed his wife. And he says his oldest daughter comes wandering into the room and ask if her mother's okay. Now, he's spooked because he thought he killed this kid. Yeah, he starts screaming. Yeah. Because his- are you okay? <laughs> I'm not. Jake, why are you looking behind the couch? You think I got a kid back there or something, man? <laughs> Eat a sexy empanada and chill the fuck out, man. <laughs> what did you think was behind the couch, Jake? <laughs> I, I don't know what's you know, up your sleeves. In Mike. Jake's defense, <laughs> yeah. there were a number of times on Dad Meat yeah. where anytime we had a black guest, I would have my son dress as Chucky <laughs> and hide behind the couch and jump up and scare our black guest. Yeah. So did you think that maybe my son I was hiding back there? Was happening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no Chuckies, Jake. All right. All right. Um, so at this point, he's already killed his wife. He thought he killed his kids, but his oldest daughter wanders into the room. And now he's got to improvise doesn't have to improvise what he does and he loads his wife's body into Name this a location i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> he rolls his wife's body up into this white sheet from their bed uh-huh. and security cam footage shows him backing his pickup truck yep. into the garage so he's hauling his wife's corpse through the house puts it into the truck both kids are still alive at this point so he's got he's got yeah. even though he tried to kill these kids and he thought he did Here's another opportunity for him to maybe nah. just say that, like, all right, I've already done enough damage. I've killed my wife. Maybe I could just call the police now. And who knows? You might have gotten out someday. All right? Can I ask, in his attempted smothering, like, the kids weren't awake when this was happening? Like, they were sleeping. He just held, holds a pillow over their face. He's like, oh, that, that'll do it. I, I don't know exactly. Yeah. But I do know that, all right, so he ends up driving yeah, them. Because the kid didn't remember. I yeah. guess if, like when, if yeah. the kid walked in and exactly. said, is mommy okay? Yeah. You know, instead of like, hey, man, what the fuck was that in there <laughs> yeah. earlier? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, about yeah, earlier? Circling back to yeah. the uh, attempted <laughs> smothering with my fucking Dora blanket. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So he loads his wife's corpse into his truck and brings both kids out to the fucking truck and makes them sit in the back seat. Their feet are resting on their mother's body. Oh, my God. And they just keep asking, is mom okay? Is mom okay? Not realizing their feet are... They do. I think the older, the older starter, the wheels are starting to turn. I thought you were dumping that out <laughs> on behalf of Shanann. <laughs> that was very sweet of you, John. Yes, the top of the water on the spear. <laughs> um, so he's taking them uh, out to the oil site that he's been working on. The one that he said he would go to. Yeah. And this is, I believe, 40-minute drive from his house. So he's got plenty of time to contemplate what he's doing. Yeah. Come back down. And right. 40 minutes of the kids being like, Where, where's mommy? Yeah. What the fuck is going on? Can you put on kids, Bop? Like, all of this. Jake, I really wish you wouldn't. That is a horrifying thought. Of him playing kids, Bob. I know they're the fucking worst. Music man. on the way to this, dude. Every every kids Bob song makes you think of murder. Now it does, <laughs> Jesus. It's, I don't know. It's there's nothing creepier than a kids Bob song. It sounds like fucking child graveyard music. <laughs> yeah, it's creepy. Yeah. <laughs> Child, that's a, child graveyard music. Let's power through this. Yeah. This is uh, yeah, one yeah, of the worst is, is pretty, yeah, yeah. things yeah. I've ever been a part of, I think. Rick Rubin yeah. produced that album, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're the indie darlings of 2023. But, dude, he drives them out to his oil site, yeah. and he dumps his wife's body out in the field. Um, he digs a grave that's, I think, 27 inches deep. So it's just enough to barely fit her. And then... He he goes back to his truck 
and he smothers his youngest daughter. He puts a blanket over her face and puts his hand over her mouth. He kills her, and then he carries her up to the top of this fucking oil tank. And the fucking um, the hatch to the oil tank, like the diameter, it's it's only eight inches wide. So it's like the, the his youngest daughter. He says just dropped right in. Then he goes down and he says his oldest daughter knew what was going to happen at that point. So she's fighting like hell to survive. And he ends up killing her too. And he puts her in and like her, her body is, is much bigger than her sister. So he's got to like jam her body into God, the fucking Why mouth. in the fucking world did he do that last part? I don't like, know. No, like none of this makes sense. Jesus where it's like. Christ, man. I know. None of this makes any fucking sense. And then after this. He just goes about, he goes to fucking work after this. Like, nobody knows what's happened. Like, yeah, people have been out to the site. Dude, Jake, none of this shit happens. Now, throughout the course of the day, all right, we get to around 10 a.m. He's at work now. We get to, he's just on the site as though, like, it's a normal fucking day. And other people eventually show up and they start working too. Around 10 o'clock, uh, Shanann's friend, and she's trying to contact her because she knows Shanann's got a doctor's appointment. She's not answering, which is unlike her. They communicate nonstop throughout the day. And she notifies the police. And, you know, even though it's only been like, you know, maybe 10 hours since she first arrived, arrived home, her friend knows that something's wrong, so she gets the police to come to the house. There's body cam footage of this. Jesus Christ, that lady was pregnant when she got killed. Yeah. Yeah. I know, man. So you can watch the body cam footage of the cop checking it out. They're hanging out the house for a while. They're yeah. trying to get in. He invites them in, right? He like says, like, you can look around. Yeah, Chris Watts eventually comes home at one. They call yeah. him. They're like, yeah, you need to get home. Because they just... He had already been at work. Yeah. And they're, they're... I don't think they're initially assuming that he might have something to do with it. They're just wondering what the fuck's going on. Yeah. Do you and, know anything about yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. And it's he's, the cop. Yeah, he's at the office showing Nikki skydiving pamphlets. Trying yeah. to get the next, you know... Yeah, and the... Uh, so there's a cop there. Um... Shanann's friend and her boyfriend. And they eventually get into the house. They look around and Chris is just lying about where she might have been. He's like, yeah, I think she things weren't good between us. And I think she might have just taken off. And her phone's still there. So she didn't take her phone. She didn't have her phone with her. Had he gone back home after? Um, no, he stayed the at the site? job site. No, he stayed there. Stayed at, so it just looked like he got there early that day, yeah. basically. Wow. No, and it's like, like I think that was like his normal work schedule. So he's just hanging out, like, I thought he would like went to the office. He's like just hanging out there where the... Dude, he, he yeah, put... that's what I was wondering. That's crazy. No, he's like at work. Like, she's, so, oh, she's he, right what? there. Yes. And he's right yeah. here. Wow. And the oil's <laughs> tank is right yeah. there. Yeah. Um... Jesus, man. You wouldn't just burst out crying anytime somebody, like, oh, I'm just kidding. You're like, oh, man. Yeah. Dude, you can watch him. Um, eventually, we're, you could see the, the um, there's a neighbor who, a cop is just going around knocking on the door saying, hey, did you see anything? Or he sees, like, cameras. Like, hey, can yeah. we watch your security cam footage? And the neighbor's showing the cop this, and Chris Watts is there, too, watching this. And they show, like, Chris is, like, truck back in, and Chris is, like, yeah, I just had some, like, tools I had to put in the back of my truck or whatever. At like 2 You can't see, like, bodies or anything like uh -huh. that. And then you just see the, the truck pull out. Like, you don't see, you know, the kids getting it's in or anything like that. Right, yeah. the angle, yeah. And then the cop's like, all right, well, I just want to ask him a few more questions. So if you could just go back to the house referring to Chris Watts, I'll be back in to ask you some things. And as soon as Chris Watts leaves his neighbor's house, the neighbor's like, he had something to do with this. Like, he doesn't normally act like that because Chris Watts won't uh -huh. shut up during this interaction and uh -huh. he's extremely introverted. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, it takes two fucking days before they're able to arrest him. And initially, so they arrest Chris Watts, they come in, they interrogate him, and initially his story changes a few times. And initially he's like, All right, I killed Shanann, but only because she had killed the girls first. Okay. And then why why did you put their bodies in the fucking I know. Doesn't it, it's it's how premeditated was this? You know, it's not like he was like, well, I have to bring her cell phone, so it made, so it seems more realistic. Like make it seem that she took the kids. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Like if he was really trying to get away with it, I know. Yeah, I don't um, know if this was premeditated. Yeah, why I, do you? Why are you convinced that it was so premeditated? 
the main reason why I do is because of the interaction that he had on the Saturday. The murders occurred on a Monday morning when he met with his coworker on Saturday and the guy said, hey, we have a problem at site so-and-so. He's like, oh, I'll take care of it. I think he knew he had to take his daughter, mm-hmm. but in his mind, it made sense that that was going to be the alibi. Okay. Okay. See, like, I don't even know, like, when my kids start school. Like, mm-hmm. so that's like, that's more my thinking is he's so empty headed. He just says, yes, I'll go Monday. Yeah. And like, doesn't even realize. That could very well be. Like, and then, yeah, when she comes home, they have sex. He does the breakup thing. Because what if she was just like, okay. Then there's no need for a murder. But, dude, he eventually admits that he goes into the bedroom to either strangle or suffocate the kids. Yeah. And it's not like, oh, shit, I killed her mom. Now I got to do this. Like, he thought he killed them. And I think all of this was done so he could be free and clear with his fucking side bitch. But it's like, dude, it's like the only chance you have this. Yeah. Yeah, like, you're not. Is to just get divorced, man. It's like, you know your wife's going to be a massive pain in the ass until the day you fucking die. Yeah. The one way, one thing is not that bad. Yeah. It's like, it sucks for your kids to go through, I'm sure. Mm. But everybody fucking lives, dude. Like, yeah. Yeah, this was not necessary. Yeah, that's like, I guess it is kind of snapping if he resorted to that thought. You know what I mean? It's like, how do you possibly think that that's going to fucking work out? And it's, I don't know, man. It's, he, he doesn't strike me as somebody who's particularly intelligent for a lot of different reasons, but at the same time, like there, there, you just cannot get away with murdering your spouse. There, there's no way that you can go about this, especially you know if you've got another bitch waiting in the wings. Like it will just never work out. So I don't know, but he's eventually all right. So on the fifteenth, he's he's interviewed. They break him down. They have his dad come in to sit with him, and that's what opens the floodgates. And he lies to the dad. He's like, "Yeah, I killed her, but only after she said she killed the kids." And then eventually, the story changes where. Um, he admits to killing everybody. He pleads guilty. He so breaks he's, down, right? Yeah. yeah. On the 21st of August, which is like a little over a week after the murders, he's charged with uh, three counts of first-degree murder. And then there's one charge um, in regards to the unborn baby, which is like unlawful termination. And eventually, um, not long after that, November 6th, he enters a guilty plea on all the charges. Is it a death penalty in Colorado? He was sentenced to life without the possibility of parole. And he got transferred from Colorado. He um, ended up in Wisconsin. I think the town's called Wapun. He seems like he'd be a maximum security Montrose guy. The, they they transferred him because of issues. I think they knew he would get killed if he stayed in Colorado. Yeah. In that was he in that Montrose one ATX? Somebody else was Florence. There. Is that Florence? Is uh, the the supermax prison out there? I thought it was called ATX Montrose. I think that might be a different state. Maybe that's what they called it in uh, Better Call Saul. Okay. Might have been like a fake name of a yeah. real prison. Um, damn, they transferred him from there. Yeah, to Wisconsin. For killing his kids. Yeah. Everyone in there can commiserate with the guy killing his wife. <laughs> like, oh, He's yeah. He's getting high five. Yeah. Like you're part of every gang yeah. in there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, come, come watch the game, buddy. But he eventually, he gets transferred to Wisconsin he becomes buddies with a guy. Oh, Ed Gein was also at this prison for, for a while, too. I don't know if he died there, but I know he was there. Um, Chris Watts becomes buddy with another famous murderer. Do you guys remember a case from, I think it was 2019, a Wisconsin double murder? This was an extremely fucked up case, and like, like I was glued to it for a while because none of it made sense, and it was like a barbaric murder. So in this town called Barron, Wisconsin... Uh, in the middle of the night, a woman called 911 screaming, and you hear gunshots in the background. Her husband was murdered, sh- shot through the door with a shotgun, looking to see who was outside. Their 12-year-old daughter had woken up. She saw a car pulling in the driveway. She woke her parents up, and when her dad went to see what was at the front door, a shotgun blast blew his head off. Jesus Christ. So the mom hid in the bathroom with the little girl, and the mom's like calling 911 because she knows the guy's coming in. And... um while she's on the phone, the guy breaks the door down and blows her head off, and he holds this girl captive for months. And eventually, the girl frees herself. She's taken to a cabin. Uh, fuck, I can't remember the name of this town, but it's within like 90 minutes to two hours away from Barron, Wisconsin. Uh, they went north, and it's not totally isolated. They do have neighbors. Um, so she memorized her captor schedule, 
and she knew that he said he was going out and he trusted her that, you know, she was going to abide by that. And he told her to stay under the bed the entire time he was gone. But one day she was just like, fuck this shit. She broke out of the house and she was running through the snow and she made it to, uh, she saw a lady walking a dog and like, it gives me fucking goosebumps talking about this because this lady happened to be a social worker. So she was like the right person to find this kid who had been through the fucking ringer for the last like five months or so. And the lady's like, oh, my God, like this this girl, her name was Jamie Kloss. She knew about the she case. She knew who it was. Yeah. And she said it was just like like a ghost running toward her. Oh, my God. And then they ran to. Um, Jesus Christ. And he's friends with this fucking guy in jail. Yeah. And this guy, they naturally, they're fucking birds of a fucking dirtbag feather. So they're buddies in jail. And dude, that's that case, too. They're, you could hear the 911 call. They go to a neighbor's house. Um a family where the mom's a teacher and the dad i don't remember he, what he did but you know fortunately like he had guns so they were just like waiting in the house they called 911 it took it's it was so such an isolated area it took cops like a half hour to get there and like you can listen to the whole 911 call and they're just like yeah this is the girl that's been missing for all this time mm-hmm. and the whole time they're like are you sure and they're just like it's her can somebody please come so they waited for the guy they were there when the guy came back dude the fucking, um, the guy was on his way back to the house. Jesus Christ, so the cops are basically fucking fighting him the to racing, get there first. Yeah. Yes, and dude, I mean, like there was Bueller. snow on the ground, so he could have followed the fucking footprints from where yeah. she escaped to where she currently was because nobody else is out during this time other than one lady walking her dog. Oh my God. So they, they arrest the guy not far from where the house is. They're able to arrest him without incident, and uh, he's another one that got sentenced to life without parole. Was he randomly... Knocking on Dude, somebody's door, or did he know that that little girl lived there? Like he was in Barron, Wisconsin, applying for jobs, and he his car got stopped. You know how like school buses have like the stop sign that comes out. Yeah, he just happened to be stopped right there, and he saw Jamie Claus either getting onto the bus or getting off the bus, and he just be she was fucking like thirteen, and he just became infatuated with this kid. So, oh my God. And from that one interaction, he's like, all right, I'm, I'm going to kill everybody in the house and take her. Oh my God. And he had gone, I think once before to try it, but then, you know, he got spooked. The dog was barking or some shit and he just pulled out and he drove back home. He's scared from a dog, but meanwhile, he's shooting a shotgun <sighs> just through the front door. That's insane. Dude, like none of this made, it was like, it still is like a scary case, but it at least had the happiest possible ending with her yeah. them finding this. Yeah. I can't believe they didn't that find woman, her. Like she saved herself. I can't believe she was a social worker. The woman that she I ran know. to. Dude, it's, it's fucking crazy. She was man. just walking her dog. Yeah. Do you think she let the dog shit in the yard and didn't clean it up after that? <laughs> I would like not picking yeah. that yeah. up. Yeah. I'm not cleaning my shit up. Dude, make it a months. good, <laughs> make it a good one, baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not even wiping my own fucking ass. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, man! What happened? Dude, what did I just say? Um, <laughs> some funny things have happened to Chris Chris Watts since then. So it's rumored that he's got a a gay lover in jail. So both he and another guy. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Jake right. love that. Wait, so there's a guy. So he truly is an introvert, <laughs> <laughs> dude. There's a guy named Trent Bolt who's a cartoonishly gay man with these outrageous lip injections. <laughs> and he claims that before the murders, uh, fucking uh, Chris Watts and him became pals and they spent a week together in a cabin in Wyoming or something. And that Chris Watts paid for his lip injections. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. So tr- I wonder if that has any truth to it or if that guy is really be funny. I think he, do- he has a relationship with a man in jail. The guy's fiance denies it, but both Chris Watts and uh, his buddy, the guy's name is Dylan Tolman, they both got disciplined because when they were just randomly tossing his cell, they found Chris Watts' underwear in Dylan's uh, possession and a massive vat of Vaseline. Uh, (laughs) How do you get that vat of Vaseline in there? (laughs) Yeah. Without using half the tube, <laughs> dude. That that's that's the hardest part about it, about sneaking gasoline into a prison. It's like you got to put that big thing into your unlubed asshole, <laughs> just to eventually have blue for your asshole. You can you don't open it first and then give it a little, you know. I guess you could put it on your mouth, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> 
kangaroo pouch it. Yeah, that's definitely kangaroo style. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, is that what they mean at Outback Steakhouse? <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, he's in Wisconsin now, and, uh, yeah, he's befriending scumbags. Piece man. of shit, man. This has been horrible yeah. information. Yeah, I Great mean, presentation, but the, thanks, buddy. The yeah. subject it's, matter it's, is dude. It's quite it's such. It was so weird. Like there were there was uh, two fucking days ago. I was reading that discovery document, and there's something I don't even know if I should mention it because it's so disturbing. Go ahead. Do you really want me to? Do you want them to? I kind of do. I feel like I've, I've yeah. already. All right. Think- so when Chris Watts told him what he did with the kids' bodies, they had to um, empty the oil tanks. And when they emptied them, there's, like, a hatch that they can use to enter it. And they had pumped all the oil out of there. So I changed my mind. <laughs> I, changed, I don't want to hear this. Do you? Yeah, go ahead. Go all right. Ahead. So they pumped out all the oil. And, um... Go ahead. You're good. All right. So the only thing left in there is just, like, uh, like four inches of sludge. And from looking down from the hatch that he dropped them in, the cops were able to see that there were bodies in each of the tanks. So after they empty all the oil out, they're able to enter through the um, the side hatch. They get the kids' bodies, and like when they're taking them out, the oil had such an effect on the kids' bodies that uh, the skin, some of the skin came off their bodies as they're carrying them. God. Dude, I fucking know. Dude, as I was fucking reading that on Saturday, my one of my fucking cats jumped up on that desk, and when he jumped up, I jumped out of my fucking chair. Like it, that was like. That was probably the scariest fucking thing I've ever read yeah, that's in relation to this fucking podcast. Horrific, man. And, dude, it's so fucking... It's such an insane story for a lot of reasons because up until the murders, it's like, it's like, yeah, dude, you're probably a fucking abused spouse. Right, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's... Yeah, every, like, his real friends would have applauded him for leaving that lady. Yeah. You know? But then yeah. it's... And in the videos you see him, he seems like a very loving dad. And it's just like, at one point, it's just like, all right, like, how do you go from that to just not only just like killing your kids, but like, yeah, it's everything was so methodical and thought out. It's, it's such not a like way too right. Man. And it's not like you see like other like guys yeah. wiping out families where it's like they shoot them and then they're done with it and then they kill themselves. Yeah. Where it's like, dude, like, yeah, all the you're driving right. time you had to fucking do. Yeah. With them alive. I know. In your driving car. 40 minutes. Asking you what the fuck's going on. Yeah. And if you're right about him, like, accepting that early Monday morning uh, responsibility, and, like, in his mind, if he was like, well, that's where I'll, I'll bury... That's perfect. Yeah. Shanann in the dirt, and I'll put... I'll hide the kids, and I'll say that she did something with them or something, mm-hmm. you know? Oh, my... Jesus None Christ. of it's Like, there's never any trouble that he was in before this. hmm And everybody said, like, he was, like, a nice guy. Never any problems with anybody, just fucking... Went along with anything that anybody asked them or told them to do. Dude. Incredibly fucked up. Terrible. But do you guys want these empanadas? I will have one when we're done, yeah. Okay. Is there anything you guys want to add before we uh, call it quits for this episode? Um, I know this was... Uh, I don't know. I, I, I debated whether or not to mention that because it's so fucked up. Yeah. It's definitely uh, incredibly fucked up, but this whole whole thing was yeah and as usual i will somehow forget about it before i fall asleep tonight <laughs> can you forget for me too i'll try all right. i'll yeah, double dude, forget that makes it all the more terrifying than or cut to earlier mike when he's like uh arguing with his wife while consuming all this information dude it was like it was such a that was a stupid argument. it was it was a much needed argument and it was related to like the way that we communicate with each other and it got like very heated and it was like late at night and uh, I was just thinking, like, I just wish this wasn't happening after I've just read about Chris Watts for 10 hours. Like, I literally just finished this fucking book on this man going ballistic. Yeah. And I, I don't I don't want this information in my brain as I'm trying to figure out how to solve this problem yeah. with my wife. And the term, the family, anal- uh, family annihilator, that's like a term, right? That wasn't, Yeah, it's real. I that, never heard yeah. it before this. Well, I mean, technically, I guess Chris Benoit is a... He's a family annihilator. Is it just the name? Because... They the, should have a um, a title match for it. They sh- Well, wait. 
both in a well, no, he's Chris Watts is in a steel I cage. I think Benoit would still win. <laughs> just saying. But that's just uh Benoit's dead, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. For a second I thought they could make him fight to the death. He but. um Yeah, he um <laughs> Well <laughs> choked on a Cheddar Bay biscuit from Red Lobster. Oh my god. Was he making him at home on his own? The I, is good. Yeah, it's, <laughs> I would I would never do that. Either give them to me at Red Lobster, which I would never go to. The bake at home kind? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've also never been to a Red Lobster, but I know this. I the went biscuits once. Are, the biscuits are fucking banging. They are. I've like, never yeah. had the biscuits. I've never been, but I hear they're amazing. They're really fun. They're, I mean, that's this the seafood I haven't had in forever, but I can imagine it's dog shit. But the real the real joy is in the uh, the biscuits they give you, Jake. A lot like this podcast. The joys in the biscuits. <laughs> the joys in the biscuits. The joys in the sexy empanadas that I made for you guys. What kind of sausages are we talking about there? What are the little uh, <clears throat> little plump ones? Those are little regular Wait, wiener boys. Uh-huh. Did she I, order empanadas at the restaurant? That's why it was sixty eight dollars. That that's a good uh, good call, Jake. You might be onto something. My sexy empanada. Mm. A sexy empanada. Um, and <laughs> then what kind of what kind of what's the difference in sausages? One uh, looks like a uh, Jimmy dog. Dean breakfast sausage, and the other one looks like a... Um, it's a Jimmy Peen, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I call dibs. <laughs> There's three of those. <laughs> yeah, so, I don't know, man. I just... I made them with you in mind. Thank you. Jake, is there anything you want to promote before we go? <clears throat> just next, uh, next week, yes. Friday, September 8th. Will this release the day of... No, this will be out before that. Okay. Um, yeah, come see us at Hilarities Cleveland if you're in the area. Bring a friend. Bring 10 friends. Buy tickets for people you hate. Just get them to yeah, come out. Yeah. Let's fill that room. Let's have fun. Come say what's up. And uh, the week after that, in Aston, Pennsylvania, I'll be at Barnaby's on Thursday, September 14th. Uh, I believe our friend Ryan Shaner is also going to be on that show. A couple other Philly comics. And then um, St. Louis, come see me, December 1st and 2nd. A lot of tickets left. Meet me in St. Louis. Uh, that's a lady that a lot of uh, grandmoms get wet to. Who? Uh, that's a lady that a lot of grandmoms get wet to? That's a movie to? that a lot of... Did I say lady? Yeah. yeah. All right, that's a movie that a lot of grandmoms get wet to. It Is would it? be great if it was a lady, though. That yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Doris Day. Yeah. Is that Doris Day? I don't know. That just seems like it would be. I don't fucking know, man. Sorry, I don't. I don't ever mean I thought, to be. I thought it was Car- Carrie Grant. Is that him? Carrot Top. That's a guy. Is it Carrot see? Top? No. <laughs> did, uh, I'm sorry to say this, uh, but did you guys see what happened to Shucky Ducky? No. Oh. He quack quacked. He either got beat up or was in an accident or something. But uh, yeah, his jaw's broken and oh, a bunch no. of other bones are broken. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, who is that? Uh, African American comedian from Philly. No. National, he was, national fellow? He was around that time of hamburger. Yeah, he was a uh, shucky ducky, quack quack. I know, I know about that. I just didn't know if it was from an SNL sketch or a no. real person. <laughs> no. Oh, yeah, who's that? Oh, Judy Garland's in Meet Me in St. Louis. Okay. And who's the fella? Vincent Minnelli? Don't know who that is. Vincente Minnelli. Yeah. Minnelli. Yeah, I'm good on them, man. <laughs> yeah, in fact... Don't meet me in St. Louis. <laughs> no, please do. Yes, please go see come. John at Helium St. Louis. Helium. Helium Comedy Club. The small room. A lot of tickets left. And uh, yeah, go see us. Hilarities Cleveland, September 8th, September 9th. We'll be at Helium Philly doing Chris Wood's oral presentation so, oh, okay. show. That's going to be a lot of fun. Um, also, thank you to everybody who's bought on Perks the last few weeks. Um, everybody who's bought a copy over the last couple weeks, um, I promised that I would write you a letter vividly detailing how badly your haters going to eat it this year. So I'm cranking those out. And uh, if you want one of those, if you buy, if you buy a copy of Vaughn Perks, I'll, I'll write that for you as well. I think that'll be a thing that I do uh, for people long term now. Do you stuff it in the book? Yeah, it's in the first page. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. That's so fucking funny. <laughs> yeah, I just like uh, I like making p- people feel good. Just telling them how how their haters are going to fucking meet their demise this year. Are people giving you? Uh, I guess they're just buying the book, and you're writing yeah. a letter to their generic haters. You're not getting people's bosses names. If you want me you? to, <laughs> I'll, I'll do whatever you want, man. Just fucking if, you, if there's you want me to include somebody's specific's name so it makes you feel better, I'll do that, man. I want. Yeah. This is a, a year, voodoo letter. Yes. Oh, I love that. Ooh. That's a great way to describe it. If 
anything that's going to make you feel as though you're going to be able to perform at your best by seeing somebody eating shit so hard that it did it fucking you know adds a nos tank to your asshole <laughs> i want to do that for you so go to onperks.com, order a copy of the book and then i think i might just make the letters available on their own too so damn funny dude thank you jake yeah. but um yeah but thank you it means a lot to me that you buy the book and uh, it's also it'll be the funniest thing you read all summer onperks.com o-n-p-e-r-c-s.com and then also uh thank you to our patrons thank you guys for making all this possible yes. we're going away in a, in a month i can't wait for that trip to happen and it's all possible thanks to our fucking patrons man Thank you guys for all the real. best. Yeah, you guys fucking rule. But if you're not a patron yet, get on the train, dude. We're so close to 2,000 patrons, and once we hit that, Jake, tell them what you're doing. <laughs> They're making me jump back into a foam pit because they think it's going to be funny. But <laughs> we're we're not making him do it's shit. It's going to cause me to go into cardiac arrest, and I and I'm going to die in a foam pit before we reach 2,010 patrons. You've had I'm plenty of time out. to get in foam pit shape. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That's All right. true. I have. He's being bashful. We're actually going to have Chris Watts put him into the phone pit. <laughs> then if Jake does pass away, we're going to have the phone pit emptied. And uh, and we'll have Chris well, Watts retried. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we're going to push Chris Watts in then. It's never going to fucking end. Please. Um, yeah. So that, yeah. So Chris Watts is going to put Jake in. He's going to be responsible for getting him back out. But that is going to happen when we hit 2,000 patrons. We're going to film everything. So we're so close right now. So if you've been on the fence about becoming a patron of Little Stinkers, please do it because we want to make this happen before the end of 2023. Yeah. It's going to be something to behold. And, and we will likely rent out the facility and have people come. Yeah, open fucking invitation. come. Like yeah, you can, be you'll be there invite. with us. Like a you can physically time. be there with us. And There'll I'll make be a couple months notice once we reach this yes. milestone. Well, we'll have a big planning uh -huh. uh, thing, and then, you know, it'll be like a fucking birthday party will for Will we go to the one that I, I got stuck at, or will we go to a different one? It's up to you, That man. is up to you. If you okay. want to return to the scene of the incident, yeah, we can, or we could go to a different one. It is a it is a fear of mine to go back to the same one. I would understand that. But I think I, I need to conquer that fear. Yeah, mm -hmm. that makes a lot of sense yeah. to me. And here's the deal. Like, that day that we do it, I'll make sense sexy empanadas for everybody that comes. <laughs> that might, that's a big problem. So you, you got a little wiener with your name on it. <laughs> if you're willing to come with us to the foam pit place. Guys, now's the time to jump on board because we got so much stuff. Because of you, we're going on this trip. We, got, uh, we hired a great guy to join us, film everything. It's going to look so good, and you're going to have first crack at a lot of this stuff. Uh, just, you know, we have so much stuff on Patreon. We're doing all these fun things. Now's the time to join because there's so much awesome stuff happening. One other cool thing that we're going to do next month is uh, we're going to do a patron live stream where we're going to collectively draft a letter that we're going to send to Jody Arias. <laughs> so we are going to. And I did read uh, <laughs> that you have to have a return address. Yes. To send to a jail. Yes. Oh, you were right about that. Mm, so Okay. I'm not going to rub it in. I'm, I'm turning over a new leaf. <laughs> And uh, I'm, no, 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 no. Just for jail. Not to mail a letter. You can mail a letter. To Where else do you think I'm mailing <laughs> shit? <laughs> you know what? That's my mistake. Is somebody right, trying to that's pay on their me. Pico bill. And <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we're doing all that. We're, we're adding more and more stuff to Patreon. So fucking yeah. I, I want to make a million of of these kind of things. So it's because the patrons were able to do that. Patreon.com slash Lil Stinkers. That's L-I-L-S-T-I-N-K-E-R-S, John. I love when you look into my eyes while you spell. Yeah, I'd <laughs> <laughs> All right. I love you guys. I hope you have a nice week, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, everybody. Later. See you guys. There's so much fucked up shit to get into. Well, stinkers.